So parallel circuits is where you have more than one path for the electricity to follow. Um, so this is where you have maybe a light bulb or a resistor, um, and, the, and the electricity could come out of the battery, right, and do a fully closed loop through that light bulb and come right back to the battery that way. Um, but the electricity could also go this way, right? It could do a fully closed loop, skip this first light bulb altogether, go through the second light bulb, and come right back to the battery. So that's uh, a parallel circuit. We'd say that this light is in parallel with that light there. Um, and there's two different paths for the electricity to follow. Um, so what's really nice about parallel circuits is that if one light goes out, um, then current can still flow because there's more than one path. Right, so if, if this light bulb went out, is gone, um, well, the current could still flow around this bigger loop here, right? And that light bulb would actually stay on, um, so the other lights stay on. Um, and uh, you'll see that actually some Christmas light circuits are set up this way. So if you have a, a string of Christmas lights in some of them, they're set up in parallel. So if one of the light bulbs goes out, you should just see that one light bulb out and all the other lights stay on. And it's really easy to fix the one broken light. You can just take that one out and put a new light bulb in. You can see which one is broken. Um, so it's a nice thing about parallel circuits. Resistance in parallel circuits, though, is trickier than in series. So look at these two different circuits. So circuit A is just a battery connected to a light bulb. Um, here it is with a more formal circuit diagram, so a battery and a light bulb. Here's circuit B. There's a battery connected to two different light bulbs that are in parallel with each other. Which circuit do you think would have the most resistance? Like total resistance overall in the whole circuit. We'll say these light bulbs are all identical. Think about it for a second. So maybe surprisingly, the answer is actually A, which I think comes as a surprise because we see, well, A only has one light bulb. There's two light bulbs in circuit B, so shouldn't that have more resistance? Well, if those two light bulbs were in series, then absolutely the resistance would add in series and that would be more total resistance. But in parallel, actually, the resistance goes down as you add more and more light bulbs in parallel. That seems really weird, right? But if we think about what's happening, um, it's because we're not just adding more light bulbs, we're also adding more paths. So in, in this case, all the electricity has to go around this one loop. Um, all the current has to go through that one light bulb and come back to the battery. In this case, the electricity has to go this way, but then some of it can go this way, and then it'll split up, and the rest will go this way. So you've got these two paths for the electricity to follow, which, and if you imagine uh, getting from sort of point A to point B, if you have two paths to get there, even if both paths are pretty high resistances maybe, um, that's still better than just one path of high resistance. Um, so overall, when you add another path, your overall resistance actually goes down. So as we add our resistors in resistors, sorry, let me try that again. As we add resistors in parallel, we're also adding more paths. Because we're adding more paths, um, that gives you a lower overall resistance or total resistance. So that means circuit B actually has a lower resistance than circuit A. Um, so here's a nice analogy for that. Um, let's say you're, you're trying to travel from uh, Kingston to Oakville, and there's only one path, so maybe there's only the 401, um, and there's one construction zone on that path. Well, that would have a fair bit of, of resistance, right? Um, but if you add another parallel highway, so not another construction zone in series on the same highway, but we're actually going to add another construction zone on a new highway that's in parallel with our first one. So maybe Highway 2 also runs from Kingston to Oakville, so you make that an option as well. And both have a construction zone on them, but that additional path is going to decrease the resistance to the flow of traffic, right? Because you can now take either path. Um, which is easier to get from Kingston to Toronto if you have both Highway 2 
and the 401, even if both of them have a construction zone on them. So when you add more resistors in parallel, the total resistance actually decreases. It actually goes down. And the formula is this. So one over that total resistance of your circuit will be one over the resistance of the first resistor plus one over the resistance of the next resistor that's added in parallel. And if there's more, you just keep going with the same idea. Um, so if you've got like three resistors in parallel, you just keep adding them that way. Um, and that will give you uh, the R total there. Um, so let's actually do this with uh, circuit B. So circuit B has two resistors in, uh, in parallel. Just want to show you the math, uh, make sure that we can do it. So um, our formula is one over R total is one over R1 plus one over R2. There's only two resistors in parallel here, so we just need two resistors. Um, these resistors don't have to be the same, um, so they, they could have different resistances, that's totally fine. In this case, we'll make them both uh, Christmas lights. Small Christmas lights have a resistance of about 135 ohms, so we'll use that. Um, so one over R total will be one over R1, which is the 135, plus one over R2, which happens to be the same. They could be different, that would be fine as well. Um, so you'll add those two fractions together. So one over 135 uh, plus one over 135. And that will give you, of course, 2 over 135. And this is where a lot of people make a mistake. A lot of people stop there and they're like, oh, I'm done. Okay, I've got my answer for our total. You're not done yet, right? You have the answer for 1 over our total. You need to solve for our total itself. So to do that, you need to flip both sides here, right? So to, to solve for our total, I need it on its own. Um, I need to have our total over 1, not 1 over our total. So our total over 1, which is just the total resistance, that's what I want, it's going to be 135 divided by 2. Um, and uh, that gives you 67.5. So our total would be 67.5 ohms here. So notice that that 67.5 ohms is a lot less than circuit A, which would just have one of those 135 ohm light bulbs, right? So the total resistance of circuit A, if there's only one bulb there, would be 135 ohms. The total resistance of circuit B is 67.5. So a lot less when we add that extra path and extra resistor. Right, let's think about um, current then. So which one will draw the most current out of the battery? Well, what we have to remember is Ohm's law, that current is delta V over R. Um, so both of these have the same delta V. They have the same battery pushing on the current, um, but they have different total resistances, so they'll draw a different amount of current out of the battery. How well, this equation works, right, is if you have a bigger battery, a higher delta V, um, a bigger push, then you'll have more current. If you have a larger amount of resistance, though, that's a number on the bottom of this fraction, that will decrease your current. And that kind of makes sense intuitively. Larger resistance decreases how much current can flow. Um, so which one will have the most current flowing? Well, that would be circuit B, um, and that's because the total resistance um, is lower. So whichever circuit um, with the total smaller overall resistance will have the larger current drawn out of the battery. A uh, nice analogy for that, um, using the same one as before. So we're trying to move this current of cars from, from Kingston to Oakville. And as you add more paths to get home, we know the total resistance is going to decrease. So even if the, the paths that you add are like lousy dirt roads with tons of resistance on them, it's still another way to get home. So if you have lots of ways to get home, you've got the 401, maybe the Highway 2, maybe Highway 7, a little further north, that's going to let more current of cars Um, get from Kingston to Oakville. So every additional path, even if, though it has a resistor on it, um, is going to increase the current that is drawn from the battery. The last thing we want to think about is potential difference or potential drops. Um, this is like our, our voltage, right? So um, for voltage, it's really helpful to think about voltage as a height. I find that really helps me. Um, so you gain six volts in height at the battery. If you have two resistors in, in uh, parallel, you can see I've kind of made this image a little bit weird. So there's there's like one light bulb here, so that's a light bulb. 
and there's another light bulb right here. So you've got these two resistors in, in parallel. Um, you gain six volts of the battery. You have to lose that whole six volts by the time you get back to the battery on any sort of loop you take. So let's say you take this loop. You go up this way, and you decide to be the electron that's going to go through this light bulb. Well, then you're going to head back to the battery without ever even going through the other light bulb, right? You can do a fully closed loop right there. So that means you have to lose all six volts right there to get back to a height of zero so that you can ride up the battery and go up six volts again there. Um, I kind of think of it as like a roller coaster. The roller coaster brings you up. You take this loop. You have to get back down to a set of zero height so that you can go up that big hill again in your roller coaster. Um, if you choose to take the other path, so you go up six volts of the battery, and you decide, oh, I want the electron that's going to go through this, uh, um, this, this resistor over here. Well, then you have to lose, you gain six volts of energy here, or six volts of height. You have to lose all six volts of height here, or six volts of energy there, in order to get down to zero before you're back to the battery again. Because you're not even going to go through that other light bulb, right? You're only going through your one path. You have to lose all your six volts there. So looking at um, circuit A and circuit B, um, which one will have the largest potential drop across one bulb? Think about it for a second. Hopefully you said they're both the same. Um, they're both going to be six volts, right? So if we gain, um, if this is a six volt battery, we gain six volts at this battery, you would have to lose all six volts through that light bulb. If you gain six volts um, in the battery for circuit B though, you would gain six volts with, you would lose those six volts at this light bulb, or the other light bulb, depending on which path you go through. Um, so you, uh, so in parallel, your potential drop across two bulbs in, in parallel is the same. So the potential uh, difference or the potential drop uh, across light bulbs or resistors of any kind that are in parallel would be equal. Um, and you have to remember, I'm thinking about a closed loop back to the battery and you have to use up all your potential um, before you get back to the battery. So also remember to look for closed loop back to the battery um, you have to use all your potential so all of your volts that you gained from the battery um, uh, by the time you get back to the battery. Um, on any loop you take. And what's tricky about parallel circuits is of course you have options for, uh, for which loop to take. And that is parallel circuits.